As night falls on the streets of San Francisco, these fully electric cars are gearing up for a takeover. And yes, they are fully electric. No humans behind the wheel. There we go. This is weird, no one to say hello to. General Motors owned crews allowed our cameras to be the first to go for a spin in a car they call Poppy. Buckling up and we're off. But even before we got going, Poppy ran into a problem. We got traffic coming. We got a double port semi. This is just the beginning of our trip. Without enough room to easily pull forward, the car tried backing up. Then we noticed something happened on your trip. Poppy's computer crashed. Crew says the failure was caused by a bug that very infrequently causes the autonomous vehicle to shut down when it attempts to go in reverse. Oh, I'm sorry for the problem. After some human intervention, a system reboot in about 30 minutes. All right, second time's a charm. The car was good to go. The hills of the Bay Area, look at this. The situations like this are actually part of what drove crews to start their operation on the complex roads of San Francisco. You have to put it in the most challenging environment. In June, these driverless cars became the first to navigate a major city with paying customers on board, and it's the unpredictable human behavior that's the true training ground for these Chevy Bolts and their slew of sensors. And they've already seen everything from random roller skating parties to wildlife. Despite the initial speed bump, my ride was smooth to the point that you'd forget no one was driving. All right, so here's the thing. This car still has its steering wheel there, still has its pedals, but if this is the future, how long till those are gone? Cruise co-founder Kyle Vogt says these bolts right. are just the beginning. This does not look like a car. Are you calling it a car? It's, it's what comes after the car. This is what Cruise calls <laughs> the origin. This, this is leg room right here. Here it is. Wow, look at this. A six passenger vehicle, minus the driver and minus the steering wheel. How much space is, is actually in here? It's the same size as a regular vehicle. <laughs> We've just gotten rid of all the stuff that you don't need. Origin is in its testing phase and expected to roll off the assembly line next year. Meanwhile, the ride for Cruise has been a little bumpy. This summer, federal safety regulators launched a special crash investigation into an accident that left passengers with allegedly minor injuries. In April, one of their self-driving cars went viral when it was pulled over because a human forgot to turn on its headlights. And in June, a bug caused some cars to temporarily slow down and stop, forcing other cars to go around them. Cruz says all those problems have been fixed. A lot of your hiccups have come before everybody else's. Is it hard getting people to trust autonomous cars, especially being first? Well, important thing to realize, we're only a few months into this, and so we're learning a lot as we go. Still, some safety advocates say Cruz and other self-driving car companies should consider pumping the brakes. What do you say to people who see this and think that we're moving way too fast towards autonomous driving? Well, to start with, I mean, the status quo is not a pretty picture. You know, we feel like we're in a war against car accidents here. So we feel a sense of urgency to get this technology out there as soon as it can be done safely. And guys, the driverless car wars are heating up in Silicon Valley. Google's self-driving car venture Waymo, which we've covered before, which we also saw out on the streets, is also nearing its launch in San Francisco, while Cruise plans on announcing expansion to other big cities later this year. Mm. Guys. So, Gary, I mean, as, as we saw there, you were involved in, in what the company called a failure of one of their self-driving cars. Did you ever feel unsafe at any point? Mm, I, I wouldn't say I felt unsafe, but it did seem like it was a situation that a human driver would have figured out pretty quick. Uh, apart from that, the car seemed to drive very much on the defensive side. And in the area that they operate right now, they have to keep the speed under 30 miles an hour, usually at night when traffic is extremely light. Uh, as for that glitch you saw, Crew says it's now fixed. Oh. Guys. Okay. okay. All right. Guy Schwartz, thanks for <laughs> Thank being so God. brave, Gotti. I know. <laughs> wow. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.